Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will have a look again at a historical ciphertext. And this is also part of a project that I worked on a few years ago, together with my colleague and friend Jürgen Dinnesen. And together with Jürgen, we analyzed this very interesting Dutch ciphertext from the 17th century. And in this video, I want to present to you the background of the ciphertext and the decryption. I structured this video into five different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at the Dutch East India Company, the VOC, because this is a company that the encrypted letter that I present in this video was sent to. Then we will have a look at Van Hoons, Salem and the island Remanakoil. What these are, you will see later. Then we will have a look at the encrypted letters travel through the world. Then we will have a look at the encrypted letter today and its decipherment. And finally, we will do it in Crypto 2. We will have a look at the encrypted letter and decrypt it. The Dutch East India Company VOC. The United East India Company, Dutch Vereinigte Ostindische Kampagne, was a chartered company existing from 20th March 1602 until the 31st December 1799. And at that time, it was the largest private company. In today's world, it is comparable to companies like Walmart, Amazon or Apple. So the VOC was a very big player in its time. In its heyday, the VOC had more than 150 ships and 200 to 250 locations around Asia and about 20,000 employees. It had a monopoly on Asian trade and was known for its spice trade, particularly in nutmeg, maize and cloves. The VOC was so powerful, it had the ability to wage war, negotiate treaties and establish colonies. They were even allowed to execute prisoners. And the so-called Lord 17 were the governing body of the VOC. On the right side here, you can see the former VOC headquarters in Amsterdam and you can visit this even today and have a look at it here. Here on the right side, you can see the VOC seal. It's like the brand of the VOC. Rikloff van Hoens was an important figure in the VOC. You can see him here on the right side. Van Hoens served twice as a governor of Ceylon, now known as Sri Lanka, for the VOC between 1662 and 1672. He was a successful diplomat in present-day Indonesia and at the age of only 37 became one of the leading figures in Batavia, modern Jakarta, the key VOC settlement in Asia. In 1655, Van Hoems presented his plans for Asia to the Lord 17 in Amsterdam and was given the green light to lead conquests in northwestern India, Diu, Ceylon and southern India to Tukorin, successfully capturing most of these areas by 1658. In 1663, he conquered Cochin on the southwest coast of India, Malabar, a crucial area for the pepper trade. By 1674, the VUC controlled the coast of Ceylon, while the inland was held by the King of Kandy. Let's have a look at Ceylon. Dutch Ceylon was a governorate established in present-day Sri Lanka by the VOC from 1640 until 1796. The Dutch captured most coastal areas but were never able to control the Kingdom of Kandy in the island's interior. So basically the coast was in the hand of the Dutch and the internal interior of the island was in the hand of the King of Kandy. The Dutch were initially invited by the Sinhalese king to help fight the Portuguese, leading to the Dutch capturing maritime provinces and establishing control. Dutch Salem's capital was Galley, initially moving to Colombo in 1658. You can see Galley here and Colombo here. The Dutch rule ended with the British takeover in 1796 due to geopolitical shifts in Europe. Now the island Remanakoi. The island Remanakoi, known today as Rameswaram, is an island situated off the mainland of South India. You can see Ramanakoi here. And the island of Mana is connected through Adams Bridge with 
Ramanakoi. You can see the island of Mana here, connected to Salen here, present-day Sri Lanka, or near Salen, present-day Sri Lanka. And Adams Bridge here is a sandbank, you can see it on the satellite image here, that connects Ramanakoi and the island of Mana. Now let's have a look at the encrypted letter. In 1674, Van Hooms had a wish list of expansions, which he wanted to conquer, presented as clovers on the map. You can see here a very old map, and the clovers here are part of the wish list, or they are locations that Van Hooms wanted to conquer. You can also see on the map Dutch fortifications that have the VOC flag here, like this, this, this here, here's a location, and so on. The Dutch and the VOC were at war with France, England and a few other countries during the Franco-Dutch War at that time, which was from 1672 to 1678. So basically, Van Hoons wanted to conquer more land. So Van Hoons dictated a letter to his private secretary, Lewinson, who encrypted the text and memorized the key. The secretary Lewinson was then sent to a land journey from Salem to Amsterdam, carrying the encrypted letter and memorized instructions and additional informations in his head. Van Hoons did not trust the sea route because of the war against England and Spain. So instead of sending the letter via ship, the private secretary yeah, had to move the, the biggest part of the journey here, or big parts, not over water, but over land. I tried to create an image that we can have an idea how that looked at that time. You can see here, Lewinson traveled together with only a single soldier for his protection, and the distance was about 10,000 kilometers, and they needed 243 days. And as you can also see here, he has the encrypted letter in his hand. And to avoid being recognized as Dutch, they dressed up in oriental clothing. Then the letter arrived in Amsterdam. And in the letter, Van Hoons wrote, and these are the most important facts. He demanded the conquest of all Sri Lanka, Ramanakoil Island that I had shown you, and the surrounding Indian coastal areas. So basically, he wanted to get his wish list fulfilled. He requested 1,000 more soldiers for this expensive military operation. And he aimed to replicate his successful tactics from 1655 and sought approval from the Lords 70. You can see here also a generated image that we have an idea how that could have looked like. You have the secretary Lewinson here in the middle, surrounded by the Lord 17, and the secretary presents the encrypted letter and the instruction and wishes from Van Hoons. And despite the effort that the secretary did traveling so far, this long distance, Van Hoons received a clear no from the Lord 17, as the VOC's expansionist strategy had shifted. They wanted to spend less money by reducing the number of locations and soldiers. So Van, Van Hoons' wish list could never be fulfilled, and the secretary took this very long and probably very dangerous journey of 10,000 kilometers to deliver the letter yeah, for nothing. What is with this letter today? Today, the letter can be found and read in the National Archives in The Hague, and you can also read it online. I present here an image of the National Archive that I found on Wikipedia. And the letter Van Hoon sent contains 46 pages, with most pages encrypted using alchemical and astrological symbols. And there's also a copy of the key stored in the same box as the letter. I show you here an example from the ciphertext. And I think it's a quite beautiful ciphertext. I really like the art style, you could say, of that cipher. And actually, it was not a very difficult cipher, as we can see, but a very beautiful one. Students from the University of Uppsala created a transcription of the encrypted document. And of course, we had a copy of the document in our decode database. Then, my colleague Jürgen Dinsen and I worked as a team on the cipher analysis, and we wrote a histocrypt paper as well as a CT article about that. The CT is a German computer magazine, so for the viewers who understand German, 
I suggest that you have a look at the German article as well. And of course, we copied the original key to Cryptool2. Here you have the ori original key sheet that is part of the documents stored in the box in the archive. Thus, we were able to decrypt the letter easily. In fact, I think that the transcription was much more time consuming probably than the decryption was. So the decryption was just using Cryptool2 and the key to decrypt it. And we also found a copy of the revealed plain text and were able to relate them to our decryption. Here are some facts about the used cipher. The cipher is a very easy, you can say, to solve cipher because it's only a monoalphabetic substitution cipher. It's stunning that a company like the VOC, the biggest company of that time, didn't use more secure ciphers than that. But since they were the kings of the sea at the time, maybe they believed that they do not need more secure ciphers. The cipher uses 24 out of 26 Latin alphabet letters, excluding V and J. That is a typical thing for that time. Usually V and U share the same symbol and J and I share the same symbol. Symbols exist for five double letters, E, E, F, F, L, L, O, O, and P, P. Only two of seven nomenclature elements, so code words, appear in the ciphertext. We have Udle, Your Lordship, and Ende, which is End. The words Salen and Ramana Coil occur in the plaintext without their corresponding nomenclature elements. So we have nomenclature elements for these in the key. That suggests that Leuvenson might not have made the key himself. And Jürgen made a much deeper crypt analysis and analysis, of course, of the language, of the usage, of the cipher elements. And if you're interested in that, I suggest that you have a look at the paper. Speaking of papers, here's the literature that might be of interest for you. The first one is our histocrypt publication, Island Romana Coil, A Bridge Too Far, a Dutch cipher text from 1674. You can read this open access and for free. Then the second publication you could say we have is a CT article, Konzerngeheimnisse entschlüsselt, ein Brief der niederländischen Ostindien Company from the CT 16-2022. And if you're interested in having a look at the Romana Coil transcript at the letter itself, you can have a look at the link here in the decode database. I will put these three literature entries below the video. Now that you know the, I think, really interesting story behind the encrypted letter and the travel of the secretary through the desert 10,000 kilometers from Ceylon to Amsterdam, let's have a look at the encrypted letter in Cryptool 2. I'm here now in Cryptool 2 and I made two workspaces for decrypting the ciphertext. The first one I did was just a decryption workspace, as you can see here. I made a first version of the key. Here the double letters are, for instance, missing. Here is the transcription that the students from Uppsala made. And this is a very large ciphertext, 618,000 characters. Clearly, each symbol is transcribed using its name, like the astronomical and um, chemical uh, sim uh, symbols and names here. And as I said, we, we put the key here, and you can just press play, and that's what we did. And then we can see here, to Vaterland, the Edle Herren, Behinper, and so on. My Dutch is really bad. <laughs> In fact, it's non-existent, so I won't read it. But it was really easy having the original key to just decrypt. But I wanted to also test if we could have solved it easily. I mean, in the end, it's just only a monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And to do so, we created a second workspace here with the homophonic substitution analyzer. Why do I use this? The homophonic substitution analyzer is able to use words as an input. As you can see here, when I press play, it takes a minute, a second, <laughs> and you can see here the transcription. I will increase the size. And at first it's able to show the words here. And also if, when, it, when it knows the words like earth and so on, or here, what do we have here? Quinkunx, Taurus, etc., Mercury, then it can display these instead of the words. Yeah, and you probably know the homophonic substitution analyzer from um, the other videos I made. It's uh, usually used for, as the name suggests, homophonic substitutions, but you can also use this for 
um, simple substitution ciphers and uh, simple monoalphabetic substitutions. And when I press here analyze, it's set to automatic mode. It takes some time, and you can already see here to fatherlands, etc. Et Maybe it also finds some words, so it's set to Dutch. And when I stop it here, here you have to fatherland the edele. I know this is <laughs> this is very close to German, the Dutch here. It means uh, um, probably to the fatherland. Uh, uh, the edele Herren means the uh, honest, uh, um, what is Herren? Um, lords, you could say, or man, the, the, the honest man, and so on. Yeah, and since my Dutch is quite bad, as I said, non existent, what I want to do here right now, I will take only this, this is only a small part of the letter, and I will copy, or I already did this, I copied this to ChatGPT to translate it. And that I also want to show you in the last few weeks and months, ChatGPT was really helpful for me translating old um, cipher text or the plain text of the cipher text. And I did this here. I gave parts of the um, original text here to ChatGPT, and I said, please translate it. And yeah, here, as you can say, as you can see here, noble lord. So my translation was not so bad. To the fatherland, the noble lords, the administrators of the general United Netherlands, the authorized East India Company at the assembly of the 17 in Amsterdam. Noble, earnest, high respect, heartfelt, wise, and very generous lords, High commanding lords, last year we sent three letters to you. The first from the superintendent of Koshin, dated January the 1st, and so on. I won't read this now completely. If you're interested in the in the part here, just uh, pause the video and then you can read it. If you work on historical ciphertexts, to be honest, ChatGPT is already quite good in helping you. And at least for me, as I don't understand many of the um, languages at, <laughs> where I decipher um, texts, ChatGPT is very helpful, helping me um, to yeah, translate it to different or to English or German. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to show you. You now know what the Ramana coil transcript is. It was the encrypted letter sent by Fran Hoons uh, via his secretary to the Lord 17 to ask for support for his campaign to get get his wish list fulfilled. It didn't work. That's that's for me the most interesting part of the story. You sent your secretary ten thousands of kilometers to Amsterdam just to receive a very clear no. Yeah, what did we do? We also decrypted it here in the video. As I said, it was a quite uh, easy to solve cipher, only a monoalphabetic substitution cipher. Very astonishing for a company you, that you can compare with today's modern big players. Uh, the VOC was one of the, was the biggest company in its time that they didn't use more secure ciphers. Yeah, and as I said, this is everything I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you find it interesting and learn something. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not already do so, please sus subscribe to this channel. This really helps me to grow the channel and also to make Crypto 2 more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.